explanation, but it's to understand media, is to understand that the paranormal division, the war machine, all of these factions are not gone. And even deeper than that, because you know a lot of people say, oh, after the war, they're gone. But see, the wealthy people, they never leave. The wealthy people are the ones that started the war. But even deeper than that, since the beginning of time, because see, the idea of time is the root of a pro big problem that we're dealing with right now, because time brings an idea of scarcity, just like energy and oil bring ideas of scarcity. Oh, the oil's running out. What's going to power all these cars? But if science and all this stuff tells us, hey, everything is energy, then the first common sense you should have is that, well, that means there's no scarcity of energy. We got wind, we got static electricity, we got uh, uh, water, we have sun, we have all these energies around us, but yet we're using the scarce energy, right? So understand the play or understand the play as I call it. So what happens now is, is that this whole scarcity, it starts with the idea of time because when you're running out of time, there could be some desperation. There could be some, hey, I'm gonna step on this person's head to see if I can get ahead. And so what's happened is, is that in the beginning of this world, the beginning of when we started counting times, there were specific entities present during that point. And those entities have gone nowhere. It's like a big news flash for everyone because first of all, even if you're in time, time is a circle. It's not linear, it's not a line. So this means that we never actually run out of energy. We never actually die. We never, any anticlimax, any the end of something never actually really happens. What occurs is an infinite loop that goes on in a circle and that infinite loop, why, if we're in it, starts to make us believe that, oh my goodness, that we start to believe the, the, the small wavelength that, we're, wavelength that we're living in, or in many cases, uh, for many people, trapped in. And where this trap comes from is it comes from emotions. And I'm going to explain this very clearly for people so they don't get it confused. When we say awareness, this is a tricky word. Now I'm not saying, I'm not talking about good or bad here. I'm just talking about let's define words. When we say awareness, for many people that means being conscious. That means basically on your stuff, knowing what's going on around you. But not really, because what awareness also is, is awareness is basically how present you are in this body at this moment, okay? Now any adept knows to get out of the body, you have to relax. I mean like extreme relaxation. Now extreme relaxation is actually the opposite of awareness. You're not actually trying to become aware of anything. You're not trying to ask yourself a question. You're not trying to see something. You're trying to basically just play dead because when you do that, you're not sending and you're not receiving. So thus you're not actually giving any signature. And through that, you become almost infinitely small because now there's like no ego, there's no identity. And then you slip through the membranes of the reality and this allows you to become aware of other realities that are on the gamma frequencies, the infrared frequencies, the frequencies that no we normally can't see with our human eyes. Once we let go of awareness and even acknowledgement that this reality even exists, we then allow ourselves to be able to become perceptive of other realities that are laying over this one. That's a depth 101, okay? So then you have all these people out here that are like, oh yeah, total awareness. But see, to what total awareness is, is total fear. And I'm gonna explain that. If I see some car careening towards me on the freeway, I'm never gonna be more present at that moment than I've ever been in other circumstances that weren't equally that riveting. Likewise, when some people take certain substances, especially for the first time, it's so scary to them. They don't even know what's going to happen. They become so aware at that point in that fear, it turns on some kind of other side of their reality, like they basically have a breakthrough. Because what it's saying is, is that this total fear is the total awareness. It's like the ping of reality, like everything is right there. So people need to start realizing, okay, so if you're trying to go somewhere, if you're trying to do something the, the, in the spiritual context, the last thing that you really want to do is react. So around us, there's all this stimulus, meaning that there are things that are, we cannot see, like radio waves. We talk over radio waves. We don't see them, but they exist. So there's a lot of things that we can't see that they exist. There are things that just like we eat 
carrots, just like we eat <laughs> any food, they eat energy. They eat energy on those wave levels, gamma energies, infrared energies. They eat those energies just like we eat energies on this level that we're on. And so what there's a game with all the time is enlisting us through some level of emotional response, whether it's pissing us off or whatever, try to get us to give off some of that energy, which comes out of the body like a sonic bubble. Like when we send energy from our field, it's like a sonic bubble. It just comes out and then they eat it. And so, again, we're still not talking about what's wrong here. We're talking about the mechanics of the reality. So, again, the adept knows, hey, don't react when someone's trying to troll you. Don't react when you're getting into this person's trying to argue with you again. Don't react because what happens is, is that adept has already read knowledge about this and taken it serious. See, we've all read knowledge about this. I'm not talking about anything new. There's basically energy vampires. But have we taken that serious and started putting in the proper defenses that are necessary to keep our energy stable? Why? Why would we want to do that? So we can charge up. Because once you charge up, then you get control of your dream body. You actually at least get back in the vehicle that most of this stuff is taking place. Most people are being juiced for their emotions in their dream state more so than they are in the reality. Of course, they get it to with friends, you know, pissing them off and all that. So there's a constant charade, but you can get tugged so much with seeing certain things in your dream that bring you to tears, this kind of stuff. So this is what I call the dream machine. And it's because Wi-Fi, radio waves, all that, those bandwidths that we use the most in our reality are also the bandwidth that most of our consciousness is actually on. So this means that those those transferring lines are always clogged at minimum, if not tampered with and programmed. And this is how one can start having dreams that it's like, man, that was like a HD dream. Like, how could I even put that whole thing together? There was cracks in the sidewalk. I saw moss growing in the corner. Like, am I doing this? And the truth is, is that now we have the power to project. But are we in control of our projector? And this is a serious question. Each person will have to ask that question to themselves and answer honestly, because like if I'm an alcoholic and I won't admit that I'm an alcoholic, then I'll never be able to get rid of my alcoholism. So a big part of this is saying, hey, you know what? I don't think I'm in complete control over what is happening in the reality right now. Like I'm gonna accept that in order to gain control. So this is this is what I'm talking about. This is this is crunch time now because now remember where there's darkness there shall be light. Just like I'm highlighting all of these crazy things that are going on, we can all go and prove it. There's also this other side to it that's like totally open. And it's so open because nobody is using it using it. And I call this all knowing. Okay? See what happened to me for years is that I was thinking, I was having a lot of experiences, but I was also thinking my way through the occult world. And I had gathered so much knowledge, like I'm like 20, maybe 12,000, 13,000 books deep, who knows at this point. So what happened was, is that I was going down this, this direction of what I call division because there can always be more with division. You can always keep chopping things in half as long as you have a tool to be able to cut it and something to be able to see it. You can keep chopping it and chopping it and chopping it. And that's how questions that you get answers to start leading to more questions. So I was gone down that path with enough thrust to get me to where I thought I needed to go until I started getting to the end of actual knowledge. Like I started realizing why there were scriptures like man's knowledge is foolishness to God. And it's because if you start off with a lie, okay, that you don't know is a lie, and you start making truth out of it, what you've actually done is hypnotized yourself. That's actually what a part of hypnosis really is. So the thing is, is that if we've been taught certain scriptures or certain things are the truth, and we start building on that, basically, as they call it, and then we start proving that it's true, which we can actually do with anything in their dual reality, that's called a, a rhetoric. Right? Like if you're Socrates back there with Plato or whoever, whoever wins the argument is going to be the one who has the best level of reasoning. And because reasoning is really taking two sides of things and seeing all the options and then proving to yourself which option you should choose at the moment, this means that just the best reasoner is going to be able to convince you what's right to do and what's wrong to do.
So basically, we don't have any firm ground to stand on with this knowledge that we've been given thus far. The only ground we can stand on is that we already know it. Okay. Now this is this is deeper than how most people state that. Okay. Well, you know, so I heard that before. We already know everything. Okay. What does that mean? It means that every time that you've read that your ancestors were, let's say, from the stars, or your ancestors were the ones who completely created a civilization somewhere or whatever, if you keep searching for knowledge about your ancestors, what you keep doing after you've discovered basically the gist of the story is you're actually saying that you don't believe it and let me explain that if i say hey where are the napkins it means i don't know where the napkins are and i'm asking somebody else where they are so if i say hey who are my ancestors every time i pick up a book i'm asking that question who are my ancestors and, and what did they do i'm actually saying subconsciously and through my actions that i don't believe the last thing that i read about them so at some point, you have to get to a level to realizing that either you accept it and you step in your power of all knowing, not questioning yourself how you got there, all that, trying to figure out more data, but you have to step in your power and say, okay, that's me. That's who we're talking about. And then from there, what you begin to do is you begin to go through this process of realizing how thinking and thought is a direction that takes you further and further out. It's like a shell, right? So you start off in the middle, like a coil in a shell. You start off in the middle, and then that you start spiraling out. That's why I say numbers make you numb. You start spiraling out with all these different things, and you pretty soon there's all this knowledge to learn, and then you're way out of your shell. So this means that anything that happens you're completely exposed to it. When somebody says, hey, you're gonna die, you're like, oh my goodness, really? Versus when you're inside more of yourself, you realize, hey man, I can't die. I'm all knowing, this is not, this is a whole nother thing. So I don't wanna drill into that too much because I've done a show entirely just on the all knowing, but it's important for a person to denote what's matrix-based knowledge, still useful though, I'm not saying stop learning anything, it's still useful for operating the mechanics of the matrix. And then when you need to have that switch installed to where you can shut that off and go into your all-knowing state. Because if you can't get into the all-knowing state, then you can't get into the zen, you can't get into the zone, you can't relax. Because the monkey mind is just gonna keep hammering you, it's like, I mean, it's interesting at times to watch what the monkey mind will come up with when you're trying to just stay neutral, not say anything, and relax. So what I start having to do with my body is going a different level, especially in my journeys. Hey, forget relax, play dead. Why? Because, see, if you play dead when you have a large amount of energy in your body, right, and you're not sending out any signatures, you're not going through your mind and wondering what's happening you're not you know connecting to all there really is and you're seeing trees and you're seeing all oh, that's distraction all the main shamans know that and will tell you that what you're trying to do is you're trying to save the energetic potential that you have because you need that to power your your vehicle so you don't want to exert this anywhere especially in any of any loud thoughts and then what happens is, is that you also sneak past what I call the Sentinel, which is basically a system that is set up to manage the reality for every action, every action receiving a reaction. Every frequency that goes out, there must be an opposing diametric frequency that comes back. And that's how the reality self-manages and self-contains itself. So this is not a bad, this is not a good, this is just how realities like this have to work. So if we're trying to get out of the reality, and the reality is designed to respond to everything that we're trying to do with the opposite so it can just cancel out the action, just stay in that perpetual non-energetic field, then what we have to do is we have to kind of hack it, take in the energetic potential, and then basically use the energy to just build the system. It's like there's nothing that you need to think about. You're all knowing. And so this may seem a little bit new to people. Some people may be doing this already and just had a different way of, of, of explaining the entire thing. But these are maxims, these are truths. And you know that they're truths because one, anyone practicing them will see results. 
to it does it's not anybody's it doesn't belong to me this is not seven's truth it's real things that work with the mechanics and the reality and so this is what i'm into i've been looking into things like the periodic table and seeing much of what we call occultism and spiritual stories from biblical traditions and the atom and all this it's just all an explanation of what's actually taking place on the periodic table but because what's on that periodic table is inside of us and is us of course, if someone can make that into a theme with characters, then we're gonna feel a connection to it. If someone creates a story around Adam and, and talks about you know, the, the different stages that Adam gets into, once he, especially when he gets split. So you know they split Adam and now he's got this woman, but when we split Adam, now we have nuclear weapons. So, and then that's supposed to be negative. So all of that, and then that's a, that's a negatively charged ion. So all of those stories are periodic table stuff. But see, if we want to be children about it, it, it well, mis, mis malevolent children, if we want to be uh, uh, conflictive about it, if we don't want to get to the truth about it then we'll, we'll see it a different way. And that's how all this knowledge, it protects itself. It locks out the fool who still thinks that they know everything, even if they have their prejudices and they have their judgments. If you have prejudices, if you have judgments, that's sending off the signature. And that's what I'm trying to get, get home to people is now, look, if you're judging, you're already you you're so deep into this thing that you need to wake up it doesn't even matter anymore you're only seeing a fraction of the person you're attempting to judge anyway in this reality you could only squeeze less than a pinky full of who they really are in these bodies so this is the big play here and i, I see it and my my heart goes out to everyone now because you know i've been in this like publicly for seven years and i'm not seeing it get better I won't lie about it. I'm not a liar. I don't lie to myself. I'm a person like a general on the battlefield. I'm going to give you a real assessment of what's taking place. I'm not going to go and get all the troops killed. What I see is things progressively getting worse because people are doing the same thing with this new age spirituality that they did with church. They're putting themselves in straight jackets all the time about what they should and what they should not be doing when they just really need to relax. Now that everyone has their favorites and the favorites are hogging the industry and, and so it's all the same thing again. And I, I can't get anything from that. And one of my one of my teachers was saying, see, Seven, that's why monks stay silent. <laughs> because trying to tell people about all this, you know, which is your job, which is your duty, whatever you've taken upon yourself, and that's great. But you still need to realize what you're dealing with because and, and be a man, be an adept, because one for the first thing you should have known and what, what is taught in the higher laws is that earth is negative. What does that mean? Just like they say, well, female is the negative pole. This has nothing to do with good and bad. It's a negative. So this means that the bird, for instance, when you walk down the street, the bird may be on the sidewalk. The moment you get anywhere near close to that bird, it flies off. The bird doesn't say, hmm, I wonder if this is a good human. Or if it sees an animal, oh, I wonder if this one's a good animal. No, it flies off. So that means its natural instinct is actually what we call fear. And it's natural. So because of that, that means that the pendulum itself is automatically kicked into one direction. Like they say that we're like perpetual magnets, but we need that spin, that first little spin. So that negative side of us that has us in fear all the time, has us worrying if we're gonna be betrayed, has us doing all of that kind of stuff, the moment we begin to analyze something that way, this generator starts going in the wrong direction. And so at that point, the person doesn't really see anything. It's like the saying says, you know, they start picking out the ants, the little problems with you. Well, he has this and he does this, and they're missing the elephants. Like, hey, look what knowledge is coming across though and see what's happening in the broader vista of things rather than, you know, focusing down into the small, you know, uh, imperfections. So that's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, and it, it makes perfect sense. And I, I like your reference to the periodic tables because, you know, everything is energy. And I agree with you, Sevon. And in my own studies and studying this energy that you're talking about, and, you know, please share with me what, what you think of this, is that this energy, this light, that is within us is called phosphorus and that's of course where we get Horus in the Egyptian mythologies and then we have Prometheus and then later in Latin it's Lucifer so phosphorus is the Greek word for this light that is within us all and then it becomes Lucifer 
in the Christian religion. So that made me think of the stories you had talked about where the, the ancients had formulated these, these stories on science into mythologies and they become Bibles and they became stories and, and people took them literally. You know, so this phosphorus, they, they talk about, you know, the Rosicrucians, the Freemasons, various secret societies, they talk about maintaining your, your phosphorus. So that's what I correlate with you when you, you talk about controlling your energy, not giving it out. And, and the same could be said in your sexual desires, you know, from porn to, to masturbating all the time. You're essentially spraying all your, your energy onto the ground. You're staying grounded and, and that's where they want to keep us.